Are you ready? You are ready? Okay, now, gentlemen of the media, this is Azimir's statement on Finance Bill 2023-2024. The Finance Bill prepared by the Kenya Kwanza regime, spelling out how they want to raise money in the 2023-2024 financial year, it's a piece of punishment that Kenyans should be deeply concerned about. We are shocked that anybody living in Kenya and who understands and appreciates what Kenyans are going through can come up with the taxation proposals the bill is making. It is even more shocking that a regime that promised to lessen the burden of the so-called hustlers, Mamamboga, Watuwa Mjengo, can turn his back so soon on the same people. The tsunami of taxes in that bill will bury everyone, especially the jobless youth and the poor struggling down at the bottom. The bill is a promissory note to strangle and suffocate the hustlers from whose necks Ruto promised to remove the rope. We wish to make it clear from the outset that as a party, we will try our best to ensure that this anti-people budget is not passed by the National Assembly. In the event that Kenya Kwanza uses its hired majority and passes the bill as it is, we want the people of Kenya to understand that it is Kenya Kwanzaa's bill. It is the Kenya Kwanzaa's budget. It will be a Kenya Kwanzaa strangling Kenyans. We will instruct our members of parliament to have nothing to do with it. The mischief is hidden everywhere across the bill, but we will highlight a few. One, turnover tax. Currently, turnover tax, that is, tax based on sales, is applicable on sales worth 1 million Kenya shillings and above, and it stands at 1%. Now, Kenya Kwanza wants this tax applied on sales from as low as 500,000 Kenya shillings. The tax is being raised from 1% to 3%. The taxation will be pegged on gross sales, whether the seller makes profit or not. The biggest casualties here will be small, medium, and medium-sized businesses. Those businesses are the heart of the hospital nation. They are struggling. The same businesses are already being taxed by counties. Our stand is that this tax should remain at 1% and should be applicable on sales of 1 million shillings and above. Two. Income tax adjustment. About four things currently stand out in a payslip of a typical employee in Kenya, whether in the public or private sector. There has been no pay increase in the last five or more years. At least a quarter, sometimes up to half of the salary, is consumed by taxes. Much of the salary is consumed by all sorts of loans. Much of the salary goes into the funding dead institutions like NSSF and NHIF, 
which in the end do not serve the needs of the employee. Now, unilaterally, Kenya Kwanza wants to raise the taxes of the current 30% to 35% on those earning 500,000 shillings and above. Direct taxation as a means of raising money usually has unintended consequences. The shock will be felt down the chain. Typically, a single pay slip supports entire villages and communities in Kenya. As Kenya Kwanzaa reduces availability of local disposable income, it is in inadvertently reducing local demand for goods and services. It leads to more unemployment and more desperation. We will be instructing our members of parliament to post this bill's proposals. Three, housing fund. Unilaterally, Kenya Kwanzaa wants to deduct 3% of basic salaries to finance affordable housing scheme. How the regime arrived at 3% and not 1 or 2, nobody knows. In an economy where employees are already faced with reduced income due to high cost of goods, we find the introduction of this new tax irrational. It further reduces the amount of disposable income available to the economy. We find it curious that while not everyone is, is qualified for the proposed affordable housing regime, everyone is expected to pay. This is illegal borrowing. According to the bill, those who do not qualify for affordable houses will have their monies refunded or transferred to the beneficiaries after 70 years. There's no mention of interest accrued on the money. You're borrowing money without paying interest. It is not clear why an employee who does not need a house would have his, his or her money tied up in a housing scheme when he or she would wish to spend it on farming or just feeding the family. There's also no guarantee that the housing scheme will work where schemes like NSSF and NHIF have been crippled by corruption. We need a review. Four, attack on digital economy. After being attacked through turnover tax, the youth who have tried to find themselves jobs by using their creative talents in the digital, the digital space are being targeted through digital content monetization. From paying zero tax currently, a creative youth who creates a digital platform or content will now be required to pay 15% tax. As a country, we will be killing innovation and leaving our youth with too few options, if any. We will not support this proposal. Five, Tax Appeals Tribunal. A proposal is being made that in the event of a business or an individual who has a dispute with the Kenya Revenue Authority over tax owed, that individual or company will be required to deposit 20% of, of the disputed amount with the KRA before the matter can be heard by the Tax Appeals Tribunal. This is another aspect of illegal borrowing by the regime. It is open to abuse by rogue KRA officers. It will affect 
cash flow of companies. We oppose it. Six, taxation of reimbursements. That is per diem. Out of the blues, Kenya Kwanza wants to tax money paid to officers on duty at 30%. How then do those officers miss their expenses? Since when did reimbursements get to be treated as income? We find this requirement extremely punitive. We oppose it. We have known that this per diem was being paid by people to be spent to uh, defray expenses wherever they are traveling. And those costs, the costs of living in those countries have already been worked out by the government. If you are taxing it, you are therefore subjecting these officers to suffering wherever they travel. Seven, taxing trade associations. After taxing traders, Kenya Kwanza want to follow them and tax their associations. Associations whose duty is to fight for the welfare of members will now be deemed to be carrying out business and be taxed on gross receipts which will be deemed as income. This is a double jeopardy that will affect the welfare of businesses in the country. We oppose it. Eight, enhanced VAT payments. Buried in this bill are proposals to remove from zero rating to tax exempt pharmaceutical products, agricultural pest products, and even fertilizers. Maize flow, cassava flow, and a number of other types of flows are being moved from zero rating. Transportation of sugarcane to factories will now attract VAT. The VAT measures proposed by the bill effectively raise the cost of medicines, health care, and food, including that of locally produced sugar. It goes against Kenya Kwanzaa's often stated pledge to subsidize production. We object. Nine, enhanced exercise duty, enhanced excess duty on imported cement. Kenya Kwanzaa wants to raise duty on imported cement. It will be a signal for local producers to raise their prices. This will impact the local construction industry, which is currently the main driver for job creation in, in Kenya. Ten, tax on beauty products. Kenya Kwanzaa wants to treat beauty as a luxury. Beauty products such as wigs, false beards, eyelashes, human hair, artificial nails, among others, will see their taxes rise from shillings 0 0.6 to shillings 25 per stamp, 2.5 per stamp. This is a 316% hike. Like digital economy, the beauty industry has become a major employer particularly of our youth and women who have been unable to find work elsewhere. This is a home to hustlers. Now Kenya Kwanzaa is going after their earnings. We disagree. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenyans cannot be taxed to the bone just because of Kenya Kwanzaa's internal weaknesses. Rather than increase taxes, the regime must undertake the following. One, an immediate stoppage of non-essential government expenditures, including the appointment of chief administrative officers. 
Two, reduction in size of government, excess cabinet secretaries, principal secretaries, directorates, advisors, aides, departments, and cuts are gobbling up finances for the no, for the no good value for money. Three, abolish money being spent on political operations that are dis disguised as relief food distribution or fundraisers. It makes no sense at all for a Kenya Kwanzaa operative to spend 20 million shillings on a chopper to distribute 1 million worth of food. It makes no sense for a principal secretary to spend 10 million shillings on a chopper to deliver 200,000 shillings at a fundraiser. <laughs> this madness must stop in the interest of austerity. Four, domestic and international travel, conferences, workshops, and training must be reduced, and they should be held in the offices. Those who are working in Nairobi should hold their meetings in Nairobi, including members of parliament. Parliament has got enough offices, a facility for members' committees to meet. There's no need to transport members of parliament to go and meet in Mombasa. The same thing applies to members of the county assembly. Five, freeze ministerial out of station allowances in sole house allowances and domestic allowances for cabinet and principal secretaries. Six, end corruption and theft of public funds. Kenyans can't and won't tighten their belts any further. They have had enough. Their next available course of action is to force Kenya Kwanzaa to tighten its belt or force it out. End of the statement. Thank you. All right, my name is Emmanuel Tov from Kate. Say that again. Okay, my name is Emmanuel Tov from KTN News. Number one, uh, Kenya Kwanzaa commands a sizable majority in both houses. Are you, how are you going to oppose this bill when it comes to the House? Number two, uh, you suspended demonstrations to give way for negotiations and talks and uh, also giving a chance for an honest discussion. Is this honest from Kenya Kwanzaa that they are increasing taxes and are you reconsidering going back to the streets? for this. One is, you right, you said Kenya Kwanzaa has an artificial majority in parliament. Because as you know, when Kenyans voted, Azimio had a majority in both houses. However, Kenya Kwanzaa has proceeded to buy members of parliament without following the laid down procedures and the law to cross over to their side. The requirement is that if a member uh, moves from the coalition or political party in which he was elected, that member is required to re resign his position in parliament and seek a re-election re through a by-election into the new outfit in which he has moved. This has not happened. And you've seen members of, for example, Jubilee, who are an uh, Azimio coalition, go on the other side. UDM was the first one to go. And now there's Coop, uh, which is saying to, to have gone to the other side. This is the, what we're talking about, corruption. Corruption in the political process, which is there. They are enjoying artificial majority in parliament 
But we say that our members, those who are with the, uh, as me and who have got conscience, will oppose these proposals. We will oppose the proposals and we hope that the genuine uh, Kenya Kwanzaa members who also have got the interests of ordinary Kenyans at heart, some who still feel about the, the hustler that used, will see the, the, the policy of trying to introduce these measures here and how these measures are going to hurt ordinary common men whom they say they are going to assist through a bottom-up approach. Um, with regard to uh, our, our, our the talks, first, we acted in good faith uh, to call off the demonstrations last Thursday because Kenya Kwanzaa had approached us and said that they were ready now for talks and that we are going to remove uh, Mr. Kenan, whom they had uh, put in as among one of their delegates. Uh, but we, we knew that the real reason why they were doing it is because they were expecting the visitors were coming into town and uh, they did not want uh, demonstrations at that time. But we, we, we did act in good faith ourselves because they said they were serious. Now we are seeing signs of uh, reluctance. We are seeing signs of reluctance. Now all members of the other side are not available. Uh, they don't have a quorum to begin the, the, the discussions and so on. We have given them today and tomorrow. We have said that the talks must start in earnest on Wednesday. And if their delegation is not ready by Wednesday, we will treat that gentleman's agreement as cancelled. And we will then now explore other options available to us as a mayor. Do you have any question? My name is Joel Chacha from uh, K24 TV. And uh, the Kure Kimani led finance committee has now invited the public for public participation and also submission of memorandum. Uh, that is a, the deadline is actually on 20th of May by 5 p.m. Are we likely to see also Azimia maybe submitting a memorandum on the same and as well urging its supporters to turn out and also participate in this particular process? This statement is itself already a notice to our members that uh, we as Azimia are opposed to these proposals uh, and we are therefore urging all our people, members of the public, to participate and express their views, their opposition to these measures. We are waiting because, you know, there's a workers' organization in this country which will be leading in this process. But we see the workers' movement is completely uh, silent. Uh, we saw them on Labor Day talking and not even demanding an increase in salaries for the workers. It seems that the workers' movement has gone to bed with uh, this regime. Um, but we just want Kenyan workers to unite. We will continue to defend the right of Kenyan workers in the absence of an effective trade union movement that represents them. Thank you very much. Shortly, we shall be circulating copies of the statement to you. Thank you for coming.